Mapping Prejudice Project is building the first comprehensive spatial database of racial covenants for any American city. Racial covenants, these were legal tools that were used by real estate developers in the 19th and 20th century to prevent people of color from owning or even occupying property. Minneapolis has a very progressive reputation. We're often lauded as being one of the most livable cities in the country. We're celebrated for our tolerance of sexual diversity, our liberal politics. Uh, Hubert Humphrey is from Minneapolis. But at the same time, we have some of the worst racial disparities in the nation. Around 75% of white families own the home they occupy in Minneapolis. About 25% of black families own the home that they occupy. So we're building a map of where racial covenants were located. Hennepin County, uh, where Minneapolis is located for our period of study, roughly 1900 to 1968, there's over 10 million pages of warranty deeds. Traditional research methods have been very ill-equipped to grapple with this much kind of raw data. So we use optical character recognition to turn millions and millions of scanned historic property records into searchable text documents. Once we have this Word document version, I can write a script in Python that says, hey, I want you to iterate through all of these, um, all of these OCR records and flag the ones that contain racial language. The next step is somebody has to extract the attribute information from these deeds so we can build our map. I export this in a CSV and I join it with a spatial layer in ArcGIS Pro. That's what gives us enough spatial information to build the map. We found quite a few things as a result of mapping racial covenants that we weren't expecting. We've learned that as late as 1910, Minneapolis was not a segregated city. It's things like racial covenants, redlining and real estate steering that transformed an integrated city into a highly segregated one. And I found this surprising. CPED, the Center for Economic Planning and Development, these are the folks in charge of long-term urban planning in Minneapolis, they're already using our data. It's one thing to see how this played out in Minneapolis, but to really get at how did this shape racial inequality at a national scale, similar projects like this have to look at other cities or else we'll simply, we'll simply never know. Mm -hmm.